We are going to render. Can you all hear me at the back? Hear me? Yeah? What about the two behind you that are chatting? Can they hear me? You alright? Yeah. 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 Um, we are going to use Photoshop to render your elevations, your sections, and uh, potentially new objects that you're going to design. OSB, furniture. Okay, we're going to put them all in here. So we spent a few minutes to kind of identify what this drawing is of, which is crucial. And we are going to not use that, that's not anything. Um, kind of create this. So that isn't anything. That, as I said, is just a few rectangles. So if you can draw some rectangles, you can draw a section. The more complex your building is, you might want to model it in 3D, in SketchUp, and then make a section from your 3D model. Does that make sense? You can go about it anyway, it doesn't matter, as long as you represent that. <coughs> and this is um, what we're going to achieve here today. Does anyone, Anna, has, has anyone made an image like this before? Okay. Do you remember how to use Photoshop from your two weeks of practice? No? Okay. So for all of you guys who have a Surface Pro, you're in luck. You don't mind using a pen like this. Anyone used a Surface Pro before? Anybody used a Wacom tablet before? Anybody used an iPad Pro before? Okay, so you guys want to be using these. Let's see. Um, Wacom tablet. £49. Okay, and that's from John Lewis. That's probably not the cheapest place. Come on. Um, 339, 329. So this is a really expensive one. Okay, you can buy a second hand surface pro for that much money possibly. Um, that connects to your PC and it enables you to draw on your PC or Mac. Okay, it's worth every penny. But I'll spend 50 pounds and get a 50 pound one. See how you get on. Drawing with a mouse is like painting with a brick, is what I was told when I was a student. Okay? It's just not natural. Okay? This is much better. Okay? So go and buy an inch of us and go and buy that book that we talked about this morning as well. So this class has cost you £100 already. Um, and you should have it. We have how many Surface Pros, Jamie? 15. How many iPad Pros? Five. Uh, we've got one studio in the studio and we have some Wacoms that don't work very well so 50, 20 of you can use them at any one time and you can hire them how long can you buy them for Jay? a week I think it's a week you can borrow a certain pro for a week with Photoshop um, I've not used Photoshop since I did this class last year uh, so this took me about two hours three hours last night Remind myself what to do on this software. Okay, so it shouldn't take you too long to do that. Um, if you look at uh, interior visualization, all right, these are all flipping. Okay, photo reel visualizations using high-end 3D software, which we do sort of have, but we also don't have the amount of time it takes to invest in learning this at the moment, okay? So we're going to use Photoshop to do some simple stuff. See what that looks like. Do, 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 do. I don't know. They're all kind of hyper-real. So hyperreal is where we're trying to achieve reality, replicate that. And unless you do it really, really well, there's always something a little bit off with it that is always a bit telling that it's a bit, a bit crappy and not really been achieved uh, successfully enough. And these aren't really the images I'm looking for. Um, you know, there's several videos that you'd be able to search on YouTube. Again, we've got a book in the office where we can highlight some styles because 
whilst I'm showing you a technique and a process, I'm certainly not trying to impose a style onto you and how you should be producing your drawing. If I just open the video, yeah, I think that's what it was. Okay, so I'm not trying to suggest a style of any capacity, but more just the process and how you might create something like this. And yes, we're going to start by breaking this down. It is quite a challenging task. There are lots of things to do in it. A lot of buttons to press in the correct order. I've lost the tip of my stylus, so that is not good. Um, oh, come on. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so the benefit of that, though, is that we have to do it for every single wall which means by the time you've created one image, you'll have done the same step about 20 times. Because you're going to have 20 different walls or 20 different features to draw. So there's an element of repetition, which means that you're going to start to develop those skills which should become quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, so, what have we got? Let's break this down. So this is the base image. Yeah, it's not a million miles away. From this guy, is it? Same. Same but different. Uh, what have we got? We have got uh, some textures. We're going to look at textures. We've got some layers. If I go into my layer panel, got all those lovely, lovely layers. Um, layers are really important. We're going to use a lot of layers today. <coughs> and those layers are set into groups. And the groups are outside, basement, Upstairs, wall, ground. Okay, those groups are main sensible things. So it means that if you close this software next week, you'll be able to open it again. Uh, sorry, if you close it today and open it again next week, it means you'll be able to understand where you left off. Okay? Layers are really important when it comes to the management of your drawing. You've all been using layers with After Effects, right? Yeah, so you know how layer management and works. With, and with Illustrator. And with Illustrator. So we're hot on the layers. Because if you do layers in this, when you save a Photoshop file, they'll be there in After Effects as well. Same process. Wowzers. So, I don't know about that. Let's assume that that is an, an amazing piece of information. Uh, a few keyboard shortcuts you need to write down. We are going to be using B. Anyone know what B is? Brush. Brush. Excellent. Does anybody know what V is? Oh, uh, maybe it's not V then. Hang on. No, that's control V. So V on its own is this kind of arrow tool. So it's really useful to be able to just do that really quickly without having to look for it in the menu. So V for the arrow tool. <coughs> um, we are also going to use W. Anybody know what W does? Yes, that's the magic one tool. So I think as default, you might not have the magic one tool selected. So. If you choose the fourth tool down, what does the magic one tool do? we're going to have a look at that. So the fourth tool down on that bar, press and hold, <coughs> and choose magic wand. Now every time you press W, it will be the magic wand that gets selected. At least it did last night for me. Okay. I think that's about it. We also use the paint bucket tool. Does anybody know the keyboard shortcut for the paint bucket tool? G. Obviously, paint bucket tool, G. It's the first thing I think of. Uh, so that is under the gradient tool. So if you press and hold the gradient tool, you will get the paint bucket tool. Is everybody with me? Yeah, got some keyboard shortcuts. We use the magic ones and the paint bucket tool. Um, so what I can do is I can choose these layers. I can use uh, V for move. I can move these around. Yeah. Oh, that's another one. Control T. Or Apple T. Command T. So you can do a free transform. Control T is where it's at. And this is my person getting beamed up to the spaceship. Yeah. Um, 
real photographs. Oh my God. Okay, I've been saying real photographs for about four years and no one ever listens to me. You are going to be the year that listens to me and use real photographs and real people in your schemes. Uh, and I've been told on good authority that that is what the professionals do by no less than two professional photoshoppers. So do it, okay? Uh, the photos you took of glamorous, beautiful people. No? AUB students. Are they not mutually exclusive? Are they two different things? Were they drinking coffees, eating pizzas? No? Okay. Real people. And look at the resolution on that, you know? Look at that <coughs> resolution. You just don't get that resolution from Google. You just don't. This is why it's really important to go and use a camera or a camera phone and get that resolution. Okay, so I'll turn that off. I'll turn that off. Uh, we've got some layer management. Shall we break this down and see how I made that image? Okay, so that's what I had, first and foremost. Uh, what we're going to do here is let's look at the upstairs wall. In the upstairs wall, we have a texture and the second texture. So we've got two textures here. Uh, we have some coloured sketching of all things. And that coloured sketching exists on layer 3 and layer 1. Okay. And then we've also got the layer itself which is a series of grey squiggles. Okay. So, what on earth is going on there? First and foremost, all these images that we've got uh, does anyone know what this kind of hierarchy represents? Anyone do this in the Photoshop class? Online? Uh, yeah, it can be. Um, <coughs> it can be. Uh, Jamie, what does that represent? These little arrows on top of a layer? Clipping masks. Clipping masks? Do you ever use clipping masks? Okay, you might want to do, write that term down, clipping mask. Is that what we, did we do this with level 5? Is that why they, they look like the same? Yeah, these have never done anything like this. I just wondered if they did it in Zeke's techniques. No, we did this. You did do it in Zeke's techniques? Great. Okay, the people who did, who did Zeke's techniques? What is that? So you didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a 17 hour long tutorial where we were supposed to have done a reading week. Didn't we do a bit of photoshopping in two weeks? We did clipping masks. We did clipping masks. We did clipping masks. I don't know. We've come here every day, Jamie. <laughs> put heart and soul into these students. I'm up till half eleven doing lesson plans and you don't even remember what we talk about. You couldn't even watch Black Mirror. Couldn't even, yeah. I said my daughter's screaming at me all the time. That's nice order. All right. So you've got that. Um, clipping mask. So what does a clipping mask do, for those who remember? What does a clipping mask do? Clips and masks. Clips and masks, yeah? So this is really powerful, really functional piece of, well, functional process. Uh, shall I do it on this new image? Let's make a clipping mask, shall we? So what I'm going to do here is turn that off because it gets confusing. I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to unlock my background. Background. And what I'm going to do here is magic wand, so W. I'm going to tap in there. Can we see that that's selected? You can see that. You can see the marching ants. Can we see that? Yeah. So I clicked in this box with my magic wand tool. 
and it's basically selected everything up to the boundary. That's what a magic wand does. You select the white area and it selects everything up to another pixel of another colour. I'm then going to use the fill, paint bucket fill, and I'm not going to choose black, I'm going to choose grey. And it doesn't really matter what grey that I choose, but at the moment this is set to RGB 121, 121, 121. That make sense? So I've just clicked on this guy in the bottom left corner, I've gone halfway up on the left hand side of that box, and this is 134, 133, 133. It doesn't matter as long as it's grey. Click OK, paint bucket tool. Stage one, complete. Uh, it's on the left hand side and it's under, underneath the gradient tool. Not at the moment. This is it. Done it wrong. It's fine. <laughs> oh, flip neck. Okay, so what can we do? Let, maybe we can do. Is that in the background there? Oh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't supposed to be. Oh, All right. Okay, everyone. Uh, does everyone know where the history is in Photoshop? This is an exercise in using the history. Yeah. Fully intentional. Does everyone know what history is? Jamie, you with me? Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. I did it wrong. Yeah, this is an exercise in using history. So. Top right corner. Yes, so Control Z. We all know what Control Z does, don't we? Yeah. It undoes. Yeah. In Photoshop, you only get one undo. It's stupid. But you can do something else instead. There's another function called Step Backwards, which is Control Alt Z. And that will step back through the history. The history, as default, only has around 15 or 20 steps within it. At the moment, we've only done four or five functions, so we're okay. What I did was I drew on the background layer, which is a cardinal sin. You should never do that. Okay? So I'm going to step backwards onto the magic wand. Click on the magic wand in the history. I've still got my selection. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my layers. And I'm going to press Control J. Did that work? Did anyone, did anything happen? Oh, I made new layers for you guys, not for me. Control J. Control J. K. Yeah, but Control J is going to do it for me. Sweet. Has everybody got that? Teamwork. Okay. Click on the background. Click on a rectangle shape with the magic wand. Control J. Let's call this room one. Okay. I'm moving on. There's lots of things to talk about. I want you to I want to show you the technique and then I'm gonna let you guys do the rest of the session with your own drawing. Okay, with your own playing around. We're just going to do this once. So it's going to be a, a. Should I carry on? We talked about this, didn't we? Like, just just carry on. It's going to carry on. Just carry on. So the thing that you'll notice here is that if I turn background off, I've now got a empty document with a new layer, and that new layer contains the selection of the background. Yeah, does that make sense? Bit meta. So that's what Control J does. It makes a new layer based from the selection, based off of the selection. 
Now what that's really useful for is it means that we can now do this, we can go to a client meeting and we can be like, do you want a green wall, do you want a blue wall, do you want a textured wall, do you want a brick wall? And we can just turn the, the textures off and on at that wall really quickly, really, really quickly. The way that we can do that, bear in mind that in this other file we've got a load of other assets in there, a load of other objects. If I want to go and change FF wall, so first floor wall, I can just turn that off, or even if it's turned on, with that room one layer selected, I can magic wand the negative space. Make sense? You can click outside of the rectangle, you can click the negative space, and then what do I do? Inverse. I inverse it. Okay, so if I now, with my brush tool, B for brush, and if I colour that in grey, that colours everything but the rectangle. This is, this is extremely useful. And like, say for instance, you had a landscape and, um, of like a, an Italian city or something, lots of buildings and stuff in there, clear blue skies. And what you wanted to do was select everything in there apart from the sky. The easiest thing to do is select the clear blue sky. It's one contiguous color, right? And once you've done that, you can select inverse and then it'll give you everything you actually Does everybody know how to inverse? Yeah. Anyone has a guess? Yeah. Control I, let's see. Invert. Okay, so control I inverts the colours on your screen within your selection in this case. Okay, so that if you had a um, a black and white image, it would swap the blacks and the whites. So all the whites would become black and the blacks would become white. So select the tool at the top, select in the bar, you can't see it on the screen. Select inverse. Control. Control so shift. So what we're, we're not inverting the image, we are inverting the selection, which is control shift uh, rather than just control I. Okay, I use the brush tool to colour my shape in, uh, <coughs> or you could use the paint bucket tool. So I would like you to all do that. Select the negative space, control shift I, paint bucket tool. How do you, what layers do you need to be in? On this one, place? we are going to be in layer one. The background layer? No. Room one, I've got it room one. Magic one, W. Okay, I'm going to move on. We'll get there. So now, from now on, what I'm going to do is I, we've all been to Box 44. Some of you have been to some rooms and some of you haven't been to all the rooms. This room is the events room, isn't it? What they call it. And in that room is what? That kind of blue green, dilapidated wall. So, we have all of the images on one note, uh, OneDrive, don't we? I was in there, I think only two groups have put their photographs on OneDrive, if I'm not mistaken. Whilst I'm looking for the files, I would like you to go onto your search engine of choice and search for wall texture. Go onto images. And I would like you to choose a nice high resolution image. So the first three for me are fine. In fact, they're all fine. Choose one. Select it.
and right click save as onto the desktop or somewhere similar. So I actually saved this yesterday so I don't need to save it again. So you just save it for the moment. So we have group four pictures and Rebecca A to JS photos. So they are amazing, well done guys, thanks for posting those. Whoever who hasn't uploaded their photos, shame on you all, it was required. Okay, how are we supposed to do this part of the project if we don't have photographs? Right? 96 and 27, let's see what they've got. Okay, so we've got some reference images. I want the other space, really. Okay, so we've all saved the texture off of the internet, right? Okay, good for stealing. Well done. Okay, now the thing is, we've also got these guys as reference. So we can re recreate that if we want. We could even use this image. Shall I use this image? Let's use that image. Save. Okay, so I've got a couple of those. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to navigate to that image that I've just downloaded. Did you save it to the desktop or to documents or what? Down here I've got a folder, but you don't because some... Yeah, have you got a folder on yours? Yeah, yeah. click on the folder at the bottom. Explorer. The yellow folder. No, this is just file, file explorer. Like finder for you Mac folk. Uh, navigate to your image, and then all I'm gonna do is drag and drop onto the canvas. And that's what we've got. And it's opened it as a new layer, and it's asking if I want to reposition it, rescale it, or whatever, and I'm gonna press tick or enter. That makes sense? Now this image. And this is where our hard work is going to pay off. Because this is going to be amazing. You watch this guys, watch this, watch this space. I am going to hover over my layer called Grunge Wall. Mine's called Grunge Wall. Yours will be the same name as the image that you've just stolen off of the internet. And I am going to turn that into a Clipping mask of a clipping mask. Yeah. Anybody know how to do that? Jamie knows. Does anybody else know? If I do what? Right. Right click on it. Okay. Anybody have any other solutions? Press Alt, that's more my kind of thinking because I'm lazy. So if I hover over the two where they meet, press Alt on the keyboard, I get that icon change and click, it makes it, it clips it to the mask beneath it. I, and I really like this technique because it's non destructive. Non destructive. Non -destructive. Okay, so, non-destructive, you know what that means, right? You know, you're actually done. <laughs> this is why we do it over and over again. Yes. Alt click. Alt and keyboard click with mouse. Okay. Hey, Abby. How are you doing? Do you remember clipping masks? Should use them. Use them. Just do oh, clipping mask. 
Alt click. Let's go try one. See where it changes the icon, press and hold on. Click. No, that's not working. Press. Oh, apply the transformation. Yeah, that's what I do. Okay. You've got to accept the press and hold Okay, guys, I'm moving on. Way too much to do for us to be chatting. What we're going to do is we'll walk around and we'll answer all the questions. Just write as much as you can down the commands and we'll go from there. So, what I'm going to do now is things get a little bit crazy because we're going to overlay another image on top of this one. And we're also going to start changing that grey rectangle so we can actually get a bit of depth and tonality to it. We're also going to rescale this image using transform. So there's two or three things there. But first, before I do that, right on the layer panel at the very bottom, next to new layer, is an icon of a folder called create new group. And I'm going to click on that. It creates a new group called group one. I'm going to click slowly twice on group one, or maybe three times, or right click. And is there a rename? No. Double click on group one. Double click on group one. Give it a name. Wall one. I don't know. Event, event room wall. Event space wall. Feature wall. And then I'm going to click on my image, and I'm going to shift click on room one and I'm going to drag and drop them onto the folder and they are now inside a group which I can collapse and expand. How did you get so I left click on the top one, shift click on the bottom one and then left click and drag into the group. And then I can turn the wall off and on. How do I know what? Okay, so now we've made a new layer from a selection. We've made a new layer by dragging an image in, and now we have made a new group, and we've put those two layers into the group. That's a five minute job. Okay, it's taken us half an hour, which is fine, but it's five minutes worth of work. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the image. I want everybody's eyes on the screen, please. I'm going to select the image, and I'm going to go to the What's this called, Jamie? Blend, blend mode. mode. Blend mode, yes, blend mode. Does anybody use blend mode before? One or two? We're going to use blend mode. And we are going to set this to overlay. You can experiment to your heart's content of every single one of those on that list. But right this second, we are going to use overlay. There's no perceivable change. <laughs> Is there a specific reason? Yes. We're going to do that now. Okay. So there's a couple of things we can do here, which is amazing. It's going to blow your mind. And if it doesn't, then just pretend it does. I'm on my grunge wall <coughs> layer. I'm on my image layer. I'm going to press V for the wand, so V for the arrow, and it allows me to move that image around to a place that I actually want it. So maybe I want a bit more of that, maybe I want a bit more of that. So that's amazing, right? Maybe I could turn my background back on so I can see it in context. Yeah, that looks good. I'm happy with that. Maybe the scale is wrong. Maybe I want to shrink it a little bit, transform, edit, transform, scale, keyboard shortcut is, anyone? No, control T, excellent, control T, I can shift click and I can make that a bit smaller, reposition it, Ah, beautiful. Press enter. 
Okay, so now my image is a bit smaller. I'm still set to overlay. What I can do now is using my stylus, I am going to press B on the keyboard. Well, I use my finger to press B on the keyboard. I have gray still selected, but I'm not going to use the brush tool. I'm going to use, Jamie, do you anticipate what I'm going to say? That sounds a bit dodgy. <laughs> that sounds a bit dodgy. Okay, I'm going to use the dodge and the burn tool. Yes. <laughs> She's got it. Okay, dodge and burn. Anyone done photography in a dark room before? Hands? One, two, I probably did it about 15 years ago. Okay, so when you're exposing your film, or exposing, what do you do? You expose the paper, don't you, in, in the, under a light or something, and you can stick your hand in the way, and it doesn't expose that bit, or you can put more light on it and it overexposes it. That's what this does. It's gonna expose or underexpose the gray layer. So, they are halfway down the tools on the left hand side. Press and hold, I've got dodge and burn. Dodge, highlights, burn, burns, yeah? Shadows, darkens, use your keyword appropriately. Uh, I'm going to go with burn, first of all, because it's got a more of a dramatic effect. And I'm going to do it at, a, at, at an extreme so you can see it, and then we're going to tone it back a bit. So I need to make sure I'm on room one layer, the layer with the gray rectangle, because that gray rectangle is what I'm going to be dodging and what I'm going to be burning, the gray rectangle. So make sure you are on the correct layer. I have my burn tool selected. I have a tool of 65, which is nice and chunky. My exposure is set to 50%. You should be playing around with this all the time. Let's zoom in and let's sketch. Do, 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 do. Do, do. Has anyone seen Bob Ross? Yeah? Happy little shadow here. Maybe I want to make that a little bit shadowier. A little bit shadow there, nice and dark and gloomy. Now the problem with this drawing is that once you've done this for your whole scheme, it starts to look a bit moody. Okay, a little bit like a teenager's bedroom, all full of angst and shadows and grime. Okay, which can be interesting, but maybe that's not your style. I'm going to use the reveal or show on the grunge wall image. And you can see what I've done to my gray rectangle. I've burnt the gray rectangle, and with that burning, because that image is set to overlay, I'm seeing the tone, the depth behind it, and it's affecting that sketch. The opposite is true. Maybe I want to dodge on some of the highlights of this. Yeah? I'll turn grunge wall off again, and you can see that I've now got three colours essentially, haven't I? Grey, dark grey, and light grey. What else can I do? Maybe I look at my very few, my scarce, scarce selection of reference images because nobody has uploaded them. Maybe I look at the one or two. Is it from Rebecca, this one? Yes. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, oh, it's very blue. Maybe I can go to Photoshop and not use grey, but I can use blue. I'm still on room one. I'm still set to normal. My opacity and fill are set to 100. Oh, I'm not on the brush tool. What a plonker. Undo that. B for brush. Wow, look at the size of that brush. Ooh. Okay. So what's happening now? I've ruined it. The reason I've ruined it is because my marquee selection is no longer selecting the rectangle and I'm now just painting on the canvas anywhere. Anywhere there is colour value, underneath an overlay image is going to reveal the overlay image. And it's a bit of a mind fart, just accept that that is the way that it is. So, 
Very quickly, who can remind me how to select that rectangle? Magic wand tool, yes. And then what do I do? Select the negative space. And then what do I do? Inverse. Inverse. And how do I do that? Control, Shift, I. Control, Shift, I. Okay, now, what's the keyboard shortcut for brush? B. B. I've still got my brush of 300. I've got my blue. Oh, there we go. Has that kept the dodge and the burn? No, stupid software. Undo that. Maybe make my opacity. Oh no, opacity of the brush at the top here. Oh, that is nice. Look at that. Um, yes, you could do it on multiply. There's loads of options. Just try them all out. See what happens. Overlay keeps the, the source image as close to it as possible. Whereas multiply will just like a, you know, really harsh effects. See, if I would create a new layer of For the blue? Above the growth form, yeah. And then use overlay again. New layer. Clipping mask. Normal. Change it to overlay. That is, that is so hot. I'm, I'm really happy with that. Happy little wall. So wait, you do the blue... Blue is a new layer. Blue is a new layer. A new overlay layer. What I'm going to do now for brownie points is I'm going to go back on the web. Oh, I already downloaded this image, didn't I? Uh, I don't want that image, it's rubbish. Um, let's choose. That's rubbish. This guy, save that picture. I've already saved it yesterday. Drag and drop it in. Well, deselect first. Control D is deselect. Ah, oh, wrong button. That's a nice one. Oh, she's crashed. Okay, so uh, what's on the screen here is this big cross. Did you, oh, well, it was on there. Okay, you've probably seen that. You've got to make sure that you do press the enter key uh, because you're still in sort of like a transform mode. Okay, to watch out because you won't be able to apply clipping mask or do those sort of things until you either press the tick that appears at the top of the screen or just press enter on the key. So watch out for that. Yeah, so rescale that image. So now I've got two images. Press enter. Uh, v allows me to move it around. What is going on? I've selected the wrong one. I keep selecting the wrong layer. What's it doing? All right. It's flipping boiling next to this radiator. <laughs> flipping boiling. Okay, enter. That's more like it. Drop that there. Alt click there. Control T there. Okay, so now I've got two images. Again, they're both set to overlay. I can move one around independently of the other, and I can just start to build those depth or the depth of this image out. Um, I could change the opacity of this one, of this whole layer. 
so 50% if I wanted to, so it's just really just subtly there. Uh, I could change one of them to a different version, maybe multiply, see what happens. Like it's still there, just doing different things. Have a play. That is now all encapsulated within wall number one. Yep. How many walls have you got to do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Drop them in there. One thing you can do as well, quickly, is if we make a new layer, we want to differentiate the walls that we've chopped through in our section. We don't want them as white rectangles anymore, we want them as solid black rectangles. So there's several ways we can do that. The first one we could make a shape, can't we? Uh, what's this? It's the wrong tool. Yeah, so we, on a new layer, we could draw our walls and paint them with our paint bucket. Or we could use the polygon lasso tool and I can draw over my walls. Uh, close that selection, gradient, uh, paint bucket, save that out. Why do you need to do that? It's just the rules, the law. If you cut through a building, the walls are black. Oh, okay. The walls and floors are black. Um, what else could we do? Magic wand. If you want to do multiple selections with the magic wand. The lights. The lights, what? I did. Do you, do you know how I did that? Yes. Okay. Background. I can use shift and I can click with shift and make multiple selections on my background layer. I can then do control J and I can then call that uh, section lines. Select those selection lines. Command Shift I, B for brush. Uh, lighting. <clears throat> so we have on my original image here, I have this light. And there are millions of one ways to do light in Photoshop, and this is the most crude and basic way. Uh, anybody know how I did that? Did you draw it? I did draw it, yes. How did I draw it? Uh, I could have used brush and opacity. I think I did for this because uh, gradient was pissing me off last night, uh, but it works fine today, as it always does. Um, what I did is I used a rectangular marquee. Not a rectangular marquee, sorry, that's completely the wrong tool. I used the polygonal, polygonal, polygonal line tool. And I drew my shape. Once I'd drawn my shape, I went to my color palette and I chose yellow. Are lights yellow? Maybe. In here, look at that corner over there. In the wall, there's a big white glow, isn't there? Ah! There's a light in the corner. So maybe... Yeah, we've not finished yet. So I've made my shape. Gonna make a new layer. And then I'm gonna use gradient tool. And on my polygon tool, this is the bit, guys, you want to be paying attention to. Drop down menu. There's the second one along. 
So that the white colour of my two colours on the bottom left corner, the white is going to dissolve. And what's the real word for that? You've been learning that word, haven't you? What's the word? Alpha? Uh, maybe. Uh, okay, that has worked, it's just underneath the layer. Oh my goodness, Control D, deselect. Wait, what, how did you get that thing at the top? Um, yeah. Um, so I chose my colours in the bottom left corner. Yeah. I then used the gradient tool on the left hand side. G for gradient. And then at the top, that should automatically change. And I clicked on the drop down menu. And then the second one in is yellow to. The first one is yellow to white, the second one is yellow to alpha, okay. or zero. Yeah. How do you um, do it, say, like, do you want me to change it to yellow to another colour? The only way, well, there are two ways to do that. The first way is you delete the layer and you start again. Or secondly, you could create, um, how would you do it? A mask set to colour. And then if I want to choose blue, and then B for brush, yeah, cool, that works. So you can, like I could, two, I could take a picture of all of you and then put a new layer on top of it called a colour, with a colour blend mode, and use red and it will change everything red, without painting like a big red, red paintbrush over the top. You know, colour is amazing, actually, as a layer mode. Alright, three o'clock. If you want to go and spend five minutes outside and not in the boiling room, by all means do so. I'm going to kill the recording.